Hi, it's Brian Bischoff. In this video, we're going to look at a little quick start guide for using Crystal Reports with Visual Studio .NET 2010. We're going to look at the three most common problems people have when they get started with it. First of all, where do you get it? Crystal Reports is no longer installed within Visual Studio .NET 2010. It's a separate download, so we'll go to the SAP site and look to see where you can get the download link at. Second, what happened to the viewer? The viewer is no longer in the toolbox and um, we need to see how to get it back in the toolbox. And lastly, why doesn't my code work anymore? The problem with .NET Framework 4.0 is that um, there's some DLL issues you need to worry about for compatibility issues with older versions of the framework and the new version of the framework and we will look at how to fix that inside your application and um, get rid of all these compatibility problems you have when you're bringing old code into a new Visual Studio .NET application. So let's get started. All right, my browser is open and I'm on the sdn.sap.com homepage. And the way we get to the Visual Studio .NET download is by first clicking on Business Intelligence. SDK application development. And Crystal Reports for .NET. On the right we see a blog that tells us the links we need. I'll click on that. And here is the complete package. So there's a few different downloads. The main one we really care about for getting started with Visual Studio .NET 2010 is the complete package.exe. These are various other files you'll need during the development of your applications, the click once modules, the merge modules, and the redistributable installation files for 32-bit and 64-bit applications. But all we care about right now is the complete package. So I can click on that, download the file, and install it. All right, I have now installed the Visual Studio for .NET Chris reports download and I'm going to start a new project. All right, first thing you'll notice is it pretty much looks the same and in fact I can even add a new item you just scroll down just a little bit, but you will see the Crystal Report there. I click on it. I'll keep the name the same. Select Add. And the Crystal Reports Gallery appears just as you expect. So there's really no surprise there. But what I do want to show you is the viewer missing. So I'm just going to close this because it's not important for right now. And I'm going to go to my toolbox. Let's close this actually. Okay, here's my form in design mode. Go to my toolbox, scroll down to printing. See there's nothing in here for Crystal Reports. And we go down here to reporting. And there's nothing down here for Crystal Reports either. What we need to do is change the project settings. I'll go into project, test Crystal Reports properties. And then down here, the target framework is the .NET Framework 4 client profile. I just need to change that to .NET Framework 4. Gives me a little message about closing the project and reopening it. I say yes. And let's open the form again. Now I go to my toolbox. I look down at reporting and lo and behold, there is the Crystal Reports viewer. I can double click on it and everything is back to normal just like we want it. So you have to set that property under project properties to get the viewer into your toolbox. And next, I created a sample application that has a simple report in it using a data set. Let's just look at it real quick. It's a customer report. As you can see, I just have the customer ID and customer name. Nothing too crazy, obviously, just for demonstration purposes. Here's a sample code that I'm using to test the report. It's really nothing um, beyond the standard OLEDB commands to open up an OLEDB command, pass it the select statement, and then I um, fill the data set. Pass the name of customer and then um, 
create a data table and load the report into memory and then set the data source to be the data table and then assign the report to the report source property of the viewer. Let's run it and see what happens. I get an error telling me I failed to load database information. This is not good, so let's stop this. And I'm going to do one more thing. Let's just verify the database inside the report and see what happens. Now I'm getting an error on the verify database command. It says log on failed. Once again, this is not good but we can fix it. What's happening is that .NET Framework 4.0 has something called mixed mode compatibility and this is really talking about um, when it needs to work with assemblies that were written prior to the Framework 4.0 versioning and um, you know for example some C++ libraries that were developed with .NET 2 Framework and um, they need to be compatible against all versions so Microsoft added a property you can add to the startup tag to fix this. This tag is called use legacy v2 runtime activation policy equals true. All you have to do is just put that inside the startup tag for the up config file and we're going to run our application and see what happens. And look at that. We now have a sample report which works. So the key for using Chris reports within Visual Studio.NET 2010 is adding that tag within the app.config file so that it has mixed mode compatibility turned on with assemblies that were compiled prior to framework 4.0. I hope that video was helpful for you. Hope it got you started in the right direction and gets your reports up and running so you can be productive in .NET 2010.